Invasive plant species. What makes a plant an invasive species? Why are they of any importance? According to the USDA, invasive plants are introduced species that can thrive in areas beyond their natural range of dispersal. But the key to a plant's invasive nature is in their capacity to overtake a habitat and ultimately negatively affect the health of an ecosystem. The Chesapeake Bay, for example, has about 170 invading plants. The water chestnut is an annual aquatic plant indigenous to Africa, Europe, and Asia. Within the Chesapeake Bay watershed, the plant is prevalent in several nutrient-rich lakes and rivers in Maryland, New York, and Delaware. These rivers and lakes include the Hudson River, the Potomac River, Lake Champlain, and the Upper Delaware River. Water chestnut plants form dense beds of leaves that float on top of water, blocking sunlight from entering the water limiting and ultimately reducing the amount of oxygen that is available to life within the waters. There are several methods of removal for the plant, including manual, mechanical, and herbicide. If you spot a water chestnut plant, report it to the appropriate organizations that maintain the body of water. Like many native species, purple loosestrife is extremely hardy. One plant has anywhere from 30 to 50 stems and can grow up to 10 feet tall. Purple loosestrife is a perennial that produces magenta flowers from June to September. Keep this in mind when you are pulling purple loosestrife because it is best to do so when the plants are young and the seeds have not yet matured, because a single plant can produce 2-3 to three million seeds. Additionally, purple loosestrife has very woody roots, so pulling them along stream banks can lead to erosion. So please, exercise caution and pull them when it will not rain for a couple of days after. English ivy is an invasive plant that can be found in the woodland ecosystems around the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Brought to the U.S. from Europe for its aesthetic value, it can grow at ground level, but is desired for its ability to climb different kinds of surfaces. Seeking light, it will grow up to the canopy, blocking light to the leaves of the branches of its host. When it is ground-dwelling, it can create a state of monoculture, meaning it overcomes the other plants living there. The greatest ecological hazard is that it steadily kills off native species. Management options include mechanical removal and chemical herbicides. The danger in herbicides, though, are the unintended side effects, such as the killing of other plant species aside from the ivy. As landscape architects, we use a lot is the Bradford pear. And that was a very popular tree in the 70s. And we liked it because it had a sort of a lollipop shape. It didn't, it didn't have branches that went in all directions. So it was good, we thought, for parking lots and streets. And lots of people have them in their front yards. as beautiful white flowers. And it's a pear, but it doesn't have a big, messy fruit that will stain the sidewalk and so on. So we thought it was a miracle tree. It turned out to be an invasive. So it just seeds itself everywhere and uh, it takes over the forests, and so now it's got a bad name. But, uh, we, need to, we need to keep experimenting with different, with different native plants. It will do the job that some of these plants do. For the Bradford pear, there's wonderful trees like ironwood, uh, which is a native tree that is very tough and that will do very well in an urban situation and can easily take over from the job that the Red Bear was doing. And I think the biggest issue with invasive plants, as you know, I said they were very tough and they would take over, and the problem with that is they squelch the ecosystem, the function of the ecosystem underneath them. Um, you know, that's an example of how it's really um, avoid uh, pre uh, preventing the normal ecosystem services from functioning uh, just because the native plant, the, the, the invasive plants have just taken over so, so much. So when you take that down to all the levels of the bugs and the small mammals and you know, all of that, all the different layers of life in an ecosystem, an invasive plant can just eliminate it all.